A functional group is defined as an atom or group of atoms that has the same reactivity no matter where it's found in various molecules. Organic molecules can be incredibly large, like the one depicted in front of you, or they can be incredibly small. However, when we identify functional groups, it turns out that they tend to behave the same regardless of the size. The reason that we call alkanes as not being t typically functional is because typically uh, an alkane is just a hydrocarbon that we use primarily as a source of energy during the combustion, like gasoline, for example. So being able to identify different functional groups in a molecule is going to be really important because typically they are responsible for any of the reactivity that we are going to study in this course. Starting at the top left-hand side, we have what is called an ether. So this is an ether, which is identified as something that is a hydrocarbon with an oxygen single bond to another hydrocarbon. So there's a carbon here, an oxygen, and a carbon over here. And that is going to be called an ether. And anytime you see an ether, it is always the same. Some carbon chain followed by an oxygen with a single bond to another carbon chain. What you see here is a little bit different. So we still have that piece that is similar to what it was in an ether. However, instead of being attached to just a regular carbon hydrocarbon chain next to it, what you see is a carbonyl group. So this carbonyl group is this carbon that is double bound to the oxygen, which is also bound to this other oxygen next to it. And this is called an ester. So this is an ester. So this is in the carbonyl family, and there are several other molecules depicted here that are a part of the carbonyl family. What you see right here, where you have that carbon double bond to the oxygen, but that carbon is now, instead of being bound to this oxygen, is bound to an amine or, or a nitrogen-containing group. This is actually called an amide, or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as an amide, but it's amide is the way that I pronounce it. Another uh, carbonyl group that you should see here is here is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen, followed by an OH next to that, attached to this carbon. And this group is actually called a carboxylic acid. Next, on this side, we see two different types of carbonyl groups. One of them is just a single carbon to a double with a double bond to an oxygen. On either side of that carbon is just an alkane group. And anytime you see this independently, just this carbonyl function, it's actually called a ketone. And next to it, you see this other carbonyl group, which again has a carbon here with a double bond to the oxygen. And coming off of that carbon is just a hydrogen. Anytime you see that, that is called an aldehyde. So that is the aldehyde functional group. All right, so let's quickly go back over those carbonyl groups. So we have the ketone, which is the most basic form, where you have a carbon double bond to the oxygen, and then on either side of that carbon, there's going to be single bonds to other hydrocarbons. You have an aldehyde, where you have the carbon double bond to the oxygen, but then coming off the carbon on one side is going to be just a hydrogen. You have the ester, which is a carbonyl group, double bond to the oxygen, where one of the carbon chains go to an oxygen. That's called an ester. And then over here, we have the amide, which is going to be your carbon double bond to the oxygen going to some nitrogen-containing group. And in this case, it's NH2, but if it were dimethyl uh, nitrogen, that would be fine. Any carbonyl group going to a nitrogen is going to be called an amide. And then finally, down here, we have the carboxylic acid which is going to be the carbonyl portion, followed by an OH. So this is carboxylic acid. All right, so what we see here, this functional group, where we're looking at the carbon to the SH, is called a thiol. So this is a thiol, and it has the sulfur with a single H bond. If we had had a sulfur here, instead of the uh, oxygen, so if sulfur was in its place, that would be what's called a thioether. So the thi comes from the sulfur part. So this would be a thioether. Whereas when oxygen is present, it is just an ether. So then what you might assume then, since thiol goes here, if we were to remove the thi portion and just have the OH group, 
where you have a carbon to an OH group, that is called an alcohol. Alcohol. Notice that you remove the alco for thiol when it's an SH group. Next up here, we have just a primary amine. So this is called an amine. And anytime you have an amine, it's going to be a carbon with a single bond to a nitrogen followed by other things attached to it. So similarly then, even though this one has two methyl groups coming off the nitrogen, it is still an amine. So anytime you have that carbon to the nitrogen followed by things that aren't other functional groups, that is just an amine. Notice that that is different from the amide or amide where you have the carbonyl group with a carbon attached to the nitrogen. So that's called an amide or an amide. Over here, you have the carbon with a triple bond to nitrogen. That is called a nitrile group. Nitrile group. And next to it, you have a carbon double bond or triple bond to another carbon. That is called an alkyne. And over here, you have a carbon double bond to another carbon. That is called an alkene. So if a simple hydrocarbon chain, meaning no double bonds or triple bonds, is called an alkane, the carbon-carbon double bond is called an alkene, and a carbon-carbon triple bond is called an alkyne. Now the last functional group here is going to be this arene or aryl group. So that is the aryl functional group. And notice that it has the six-membered ring with three triple bonds, all uh, in adjacent carbons. That is called an arene or an aryl group. And these are all of the functional groups. And it's going to be really important for our course that you're able to identify these uh, basic functional groups moving forward.